Good morning, Thursday morning, Garden of England. Um, yesterday's smells turned into the kind of drink of today. Uh, it could be brighter, could be warmer, uh, could be drier, but hey ho. So this morning, someone came back into my m mind and I thought, wow, let's explore it and see where we go in this conversation. The guy that came into my mind was Bill Spear. Some of you may remember, a way back, I brought him to the Albany Hotel in Glasgow for the big, big hall there, completely sold out, and he did two days on Feng Shui in your home and in your life. He was a great sort of Western expert on that Chinese stuff called Feng Shui or Feng Shui, however you want to pronounce it. Also brought him to Cabot Hall in the Isle of Dogs in London, uh, sold out again for the business community about using Feng Shui in business. I got him into my office then in Glasgow and he came in and he, um, because we had the open plan office and the staff and so on, got him to do a survey before we knew we were. I used a lot of tables with sharp edges uh, for desks and uh, <laughs> we were rounding off the sharp edges. Uh, we had metal ties across the curving roof and he sort of dressed them in fine linen. Um, Quite amazing, and, and idea being that we would take away the cutting tree. If you know about that, then you'll know it's kind of interesting stuff. But Bill taught me a number of things. I, I attended a couple of his, his retreats, which led me actually to create our own retreat, the next step. Uh, sorry, the the um, the line in the sand retreat. Some of you had the privilege of attending that five-day event, um, did them in Scotland, did them in Germany. Um, we also, um, that led me to create the island. So there was a two-day version of what was happening on that five-day retreat. And some of you, of course, attended the island, um, which was a great course to teach. Big risk for me, for lots of reasons, but we'll cover that maybe another time. But I learned a few things that are really powerful from Bill. One of them was his idea that he said, look, life's like a life's like a bus station and the trick is to, is to stay in the bus station he said never get on a bus and what he meant by it was a bus was getting on a journey of thought where you meandered off into all sorts of negative uh situations things you're worrying about things concerning you getting involved in scenarios of things that are going wrong and he said the trick is not to get on the bus get straight off the bus and stay in the bus station Really brilliant idea, I like that. And of course that was re uh, supports the idea of delete that program. And the other one he talked about was that what other people think of you, listen to this, it's none of your business. I love that when he said that, I love that whole idea. Because let's be honest, we can't really, really influence uh, to, some, to a, a huge extent what people are going to think of you. But what goes on in their mind about you is obviously their business. Whether they've got that right or wrong, it's just what it is. Wasting your time being concerned about it isn't really helpful. So again, delete that program where you're in the presence of these people that might that you might be concerned about what they think. You might want to protect yourself with the bell jar. But wasting your time worrying about it, he was quite right about that. And think about that for a moment. Because all we can really do is show up being the best version of ourselves and we have all the tools to do that. Dogs barking must be important. Hold on a second. Thanks Stella, on you go, thank you. So, on you go. So the next thing I want to talk about with this is how we do have amazing tools to influence. Especially, for example, family members, uh, close friends, colleagues, and ultimately I suppose anyone out there and the tool I'm talking about is middle of the night programming. The dog's getting really excited because it is such a powerful and amazing tool. Um, in the video with Jim, Jim talks about the two most powerful tools he's had in building his career. One of them is a conversation with the coaches and the other one, funnily enough, is middle of the night programming. Getting really focused in the middle of the night ahead of critical meetings and events the next day. But that's, it's a powerful thing for, you know, thinking about before you go to bed, someone who you're having challenges with, or they're having a challenge with you, and uh, you want to see if you can sort it. Dog's barking. Maybe you've got to listen. Who are you thinking of right now? And so what we do is we get ready for bed. We 
maybe sit up in bed before we get into bed, we close our eyes, three deep breaths, three fingers, tip of the tongue. We think of the person and we simply say to ourselves, I'm not going to fall asleep, but I want to awaken when this person, you mention them again, is most receptive to programming. Then you say to yourself, and I will awaken when they're most receptive to programming. So you're then committed, then you get into bed, then you fall asleep, and then you're going to waken up at some point. And whenever that is, you don't judge it, you get up, and if you need to relieve yourself, it's the, if it's the middle of the night, or even leave the room you're in, if you share it with your partner, then get out of there. Maybe go and sit somewhere where you can quietly do this. Sit up straight, get back into your, your position, the three deep breaths, the head to toe relaxation, the whole thing into the media room, uh, or the editing suite, as we used to call it way back in the days, uh, when I was doing courses in the Albany Hotel, then what you do is you bring up the person on screen number one, central screen, and you uh, begin the process of an imaginary conversation. You actually imagine at that time in the night you're speaking with them and you ask them to be open to what you're going to say the next day because you're going to actually approach them. Um, you advise them that you'll use the tip of the tongue trigger and the three fingers technique while you're actually in their presence so that you're totally present and listening with a, a heightened degree of awareness. Jim talked about the subtlety of that awareness, just being aware of what's going on. So you're going to be intuitively present and then you say that you'll then intuitively say the right thing for them. And then you imagine in the future screen, you imagine the thing going well, of course screen four, and if you've been in recent courses, that amazing fifth component now. Then you go back to sleep, you get up in the morning, you program your day, remind yourself of what you're going to achieve at that meeting, you arrive early to whatever the situation is, and if you've got the space, you go again and get into an alpha state and you revisit the, the whole thing you're going to do, you go remind yourself of the three fingers, the outcome you're looking for, the tip of the tongue trigger and all the rest of it, and you go in and you will find consistently that these meetings and these events do go very well and nine times out of ten you sort things out. How cool is that? How cool is that? So who's coming to mind that you might want to do some work with? Which buses must you decide not to go on? And um, don't waste your time thinking about what other people think about you. <laughs> if I worried about that, oh my goodness. Anyway guys, have a fantastic day. Thursday, getting ready to take for tomorrow's recording of the new course. Have a cracker. I intend to. Bye now. Bye-bye.